and the customer continues uh, to be willing to spend a little bit more, but it's very, very slow. Um, it's very bifurcated. So if you look at uh, certain customers, they spend money just like it was 2005 again. So there was never a recession. The recovery hasn't been broad-based, uh, and people there's a, still a tremendous amount of people that are worried about you know a customer on a budget or somebody that's worried about their job or worried about you know the, the next paycheck, and that customer behavior hasn't is very much still focused just like it was really uh, 2008, 2009. We have a very diverse set of customers. Fortunately, we've, what we find is a customer on a budget still likes a great experience. And that's something that's common across all customer segments, is quality product and a great experience. We know if we take care of our customers, if we take care of our associates, and we take care of the communities, our customers reward us with more of their wallet and they, so they spend more money in our stores. And then our shareholders get a return from that. So it really is, you create the growth by doing the other things right. Um, you know, just going directly for the shareholders, uh, it probably works short term, but it's not very sustainable. I've been around for 37 years, and it's one of the things that I was taught, you know, day one on the job is, really understanding the importance of the customer and taking care of them. And we've never lost sight of that. Um, sometimes we get a little too focused on our day-to-day -day jobs. And uh, you know, I always say, you have a heart, show it. If you look at the culture that we're trying to make sure we have over the next 10, 20, 30 years, uh, first of all, it starts with our values. That we do not see changing through generations. When you look at our workforce, right now we have five different generations that's working in our stores. Over half of our associates are millennials. And you know the way you support and communicate with a millennial is a lot different than my generation. And you know, the, much more focused on immediate feedback, but much more open to feedback. Um, I always tell people in my generation, I did everything I could to hide all my weaknesses from my supervisors over the years. Um, but the people I worked with knew exactly what my weaknesses were. The folks that I talked to that we hired you know, recently that are, would be the millennial generation, if you don't provide that feedback, that's when they go look for a job somewhere else. And it really is being digitally engaged with that associate and the customer, the millennial customer. Uh, and it's kind of fun watching it all work together. You know, I always get a kick out of people saying, well, the next generation isn't as good as my generation. I have total faith that the next generation will do a better job than my generation. When you look at competition and disruption, uh, if you go back 10 years ago when we would have our business plan board meeting, uh, usually there were only one or two competitors that you talk about. Today, there's probably six or seven segments of competitors, and then there's multiple companies within those segments. I think the thing that is going to be really important for us is to understand that the competition can come from a lot, a lot additional places than it used to, and being cognizant and re proactive or reactive, depending on whether you're in, in advance or uh, in arrears, of identifying those and not uh, letting them take business away from you. Uh, you know, to me, it's the part that's exciting. It's the part that's so exciting about free enterprise is every one of those competitors will cause you to get better. And you can look at competition like, why me? Or you can look at competition that the customer's going to get a better experience out of it. Your associates are going to get more productive out of it. We would really view that a customer is going to want to engage with us the way they want to. Sometimes that will be technology-based. Sometimes it's still going to be a f physically talking to somebody. You know, if, if you think about, just think about your best ever customer ex experience you had as a customer, how it made you feel. In all likelihood, you know, the time that you went to your favorite restaurant or your favorite food or your favorite server, it's hard to get that electronically. 
So it's going to be really important to provide that to a customer. But there's other times when you're in a rush and you need to be in two places and the kids have a soccer practice and, oh, by the way, you forgot something. You're going to want to just be able to pick up your phone, have somebody tell you what you might want for dinner, and be able to pick it up for dinner. So I think technology is going to take us to a place that none of us can imagine other than it's exciting. And I think part of the key will be being nimble enough and being ready for those transitions. And if you try to bet everything in one spot, it'll be like going and putting all your ba eggs in one basket. I don't think that's right. I do think it's important to keep several baskets open so wherever the customer wants to go, you're able to support them when they go there.